Nielsen Palace is making waves and it's on the cobbles, so much so that when asked, Walt Van Aert named him as one of his rivals for the Belgian monument, the Tour of Flanders. I'm here at the Team's Hotel in Lucran, Belgium, speaking with the American about the upcoming race. Uh, it makes me feel pretty good. Um, yeah, I guess I had a pretty good ride in Doris Dorf Landren, so um, yeah, I think that sort of just put my name on the map a little bit, but yeah, I'm really happy to, to be, you know, up there named as one of the favorites now. It's only better for me the longer the race is. Um, every world championships that I've done, I've felt really competitive or even more competitive the deeper the race went. So yeah, I mean, Flanders is probably going to be the, the hardest of all the long races I've done just because of the cobblestones and the short climbs and the smaller roads. So yeah, I think I'm hoping it's just gonna, you know, play into my favor even more. But yeah, like you said, it's my first time racing Flanders, so it'll be a new experience, but it's uh, one that I'm really excited to tackle. Consistency is paying off for Nilsson. Last year, he finished 12th overall in the Tour de France. This season, sixth overall in the week-long stage race, Perry Nice. And in one day races too, he's performing. Of course, he won San Sebastian a few years ago and finished fifth also in the World Championships. And more recently, seventh in Milan San Remo. And Wednesday, finishing third in the Cobble Classic Dwarves Dwarf Landerin. It's huge. Um, it's definitely just something I've been working towards for a very long time and I've finally had a healthy, clean spring to keep the fitness, keep the fitness, you know, at a pretty high level. And um, yeah, it's, it hasn't always been uh, quite so consistent in the spring for me, whether it's been an illness or a uh, crash or whatever. So um, finally having a smooth spring feels really good. I guess it's just, it's tough when you get sidelined by something like an illness where it doesn't really feel like you've done anything wrong. It's just, but it, but you know, it's something that forces you to, to stop and, um, you know, rethink what your plans are going to be and not knowing where your fitness is going to be on the tail end of it. So this year has been just an incredible experience of sort of knowing how I'm going into each race, um, being just sort of consistent, um, just, yeah, keeps my confidence really high for every race that I've been gone to. As a stage racer with a bigger engine, a longer race like the Tour of Flanders at 275 kilometers should play into his favor. But keep in mind, he barely knows these cobbled roads and it's his debut in the race. Yeah, the, the recon a couple days ago was the first time I rode, I think all of them. I think I may have ridden a few of them in the U23 Flanders, but it was such a blur and so long ago that I, I don't really remember. So I was having a hard time keeping all of the sectors straight in my head. Luckily, I've got great directors and great teammates by my side to uh, shepherd me through the race. For the guys that have raced Flanders 11, 12 times, I think they have such a good feel on how much speed they can carry in into the sectors, through corners, out of the sectors. I think the lines they take are the things that you can really improve on, and those are things that I'll have to play some catch up on. But overall, to get over the cobble sectors in a good place, it just comes down to fitness and your legs in the end. So I'm going to be relying on, on my fitness to carry me through whatever my you know, previous knowledge of this race uh, is going to let me down on. So yeah, I mean, I think my fitness is in a, as good of a place as it possibly can be. And I feel more mo motivated than, uh, than I've ever been. So um, hopefully it's enough. A new experience, um, yeah, a dream that I didn't really um, didn't really expect to be a part of until maybe a year ago. But yeah, as soon as I sort of saw it as a reality, it's just, you know, given me another dream to chase after in cycling, one that I never really thought I would have the opportunity to chase after. But um, yeah, it's really exciting to be here now. But buckle up, these are interesting times for the classics with skinny stage racers like Tade Pogacar, Nielsen Palace out there bumping shoulders with the bigger, burlier riders like Walt Van Aert. Obviously, I, I know the magnitude and the level that they're, that they're at and the results they have, they definitely you know, deserve respect and for everything they've accomplished. But at the same time, in the race, I don't think about it too much because at the end of the day, I'm trying to beat them. So uh, it's not like I'm putting them up on a pedestal or something like that. I have loads of respect for them, um, but they're still a competitor. So got to try and beat them. At the end of the day, I want to win the race and they do too. So they wouldn't hesitate to, to take my position if it's going to help them win. And I wouldn't hesitate to uh, jump in front of them if I, if I need a better position as well. So I've had confirmation that my legs are there and my fitness is there. So yeah, I wouldn't be afraid to 
uh, take a position when I need it. Respect for the classic stars like Van Aert and Vanderpool is one thing, but Palace will push as much as it takes to win the Turf Landers.